Uh, we're delighted to be uh, sponsoring all of the masterclasses. Um, they've been brilliant so far, and no doubt Barbara, who's up next, will also be brilliant. Let me tell you a few things about Barbara. She is a teacher of English. Well, first of all, she's Polish but lives in Norway yeah. and teaches in Norway. She teaches English in both vocational and an academic setting. Her students are fluent in video editing, content curation, podcasting, mind mapping. I don't even know what mind mapping is. <laughs> mind mapping, collaboration, and screencasting. They're not only that, they're proficient in web searching and the use of digital platforms. Barbara has already won an award, so this will come easily to her. She, in 2017, she won Norway's prestigious, prestigious, oh, I can't pronounce that. Gull Eppleplisen. Yeah, say that again. Gull Eppleplisen. That's a big teaching prize for those of you <laughs> That's who in Norwegian, Norwegian, not in English. So. She was the only European teacher who received the Great Global Project Challenge Grant Prize for her latest project called The Universe is Made of Tiny Stories. This is going to be fab. You're in for a treat. Over to you, Barbara. Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy and excited to be here today. It's a pleasure to share my passion and my knowledge with you. I think that we can learn a lot when we start sharing everything we are doing in our classroom. Uh, when I've been preparing for that talk, I had to came up. I had to come up with a title. So the title for my today's session is my global learning journey. I'm not only a teacher. I'm a lifelong learner, and uh, I believe that if you are a teacher, you have to learn, relearn, and unlearn. That's what I do every single day. Uh, I teach in Norway, and that's the school that I teach at. We have both vocational and academic lines of studies. And as you can see by looking at this picture, it's still winter time in Norway. When I left home, it was minus 14. So think about how lucky we are to stay here and to be able to experience summertime. So there is a big difference when it comes to the weather between Dubai and Nanasta. So my school is located very close to the international uh, airport called Gardamon and 45 kilometers from Oslo. And we have more than 800 students and around 120 teachers working at Nanasta High School. And I did start teaching English at Nanasta High School uh, 10 years ago. In fact, in 10 days time, I'm going to celebrate a 10 year anniversary. So I'm really happy about that. Okay. So, as you know, I hope you know that I'm really interested in technology and technology is a very powerful and effective tool. That is why I thought it would be a good idea to ask you to participate in that short kind of poll. So, the first thing I want you to do today, I want you to enter the following link, menti.com, and then you have to type the following code, all right? 93, 38, and 32. You will be redirected to my poll in a minute. It's a very user-friendly tool that I use together with my students. I'm not the only person um, who's in charge of making polls. I usually ask my students to, uh, to create these polls as well. So right now, let uh, me show you what we'll be doing. That's the first question I want you to answer. I want you to share your name, location, and a Twitter handle. I think it's really important to connect with you and to know where you come from, what your name is. Technology is all about connections. So right now, please enter the following link, okay? And then type the following code. And when you are going to do it, uh, all your answers will be displayed here. Perfect, Eddie, thank you very much. We have another finalist, okay, who's with us here today. Lovely, and we are connected on Twitter already, okay. Uh, in a minute, I will explain why I want you to use Twitter as a teacher and how the use of Twitter impacted my teaching career and why I think it's such a good idea to use social media and stay connected, stay, um, or use um, social media networking sites actively India, I thought that my class was multicultural, but no. Okay, today's class is even ma much more multicultural. Amazing, okay. Wow, there's someone from Norway. 
Welcome, okay, perfect, okay. I see that some of you are not on Twitter, but maybe after that session you will change your mind and you will sign up, we will see, hard to say. Japan, India, perfect. India again, Nigeria, London, amazing. So as you see, when your students are going to participate in your poll, all the answers will be displayed at the same time on the whiteboard. And if you would like to create the same kind of poll, you have to enter mentimeter.com, that's the main website. But students or people who are going to participate in your poll have to enter the following link, okay? And I do have another question that I want you to answer because there are different types of questions that you can ask your students. You can create a word cloud, you can create a pie chart, a diagram, you name it. Lots of different uh, functions here. Okay, so right now I hope that you are already using digital technology in your classroom. I would like you to share with us what's your favorite tool or app that you use in your classroom and think about digital, digital tools. And again, wow, good one, okay. And by the way, that's a Norwegian one, okay, invented by uh, Norwegians. Okay, perfect. I do not teach maths, I don't know this one, but thanks for sharing. Class Dodo, good one. Prezi, YouTube, Edmondo, great one. Okay, and I've been using other tools. Anything else? What's up? Good one? Mm -hmm. So the one that uh, we are talking or we are using now is called Mentimeter.com. If someone would like to take a picture or use it later in his own classroom. Flipgrid, perfect. Okay, and by the way, I'm going to show you Flipgrid today and you will be asked to participate in my Flipgrid classroom. Padlet, Great, Skype, iPad, lots of different tools. I'm really happy that you're already using some kind of digital technology in your teaching. Thank you for your input and uh, I have to move on, okay? <laughs> so. Okay, so one of the tools that I use very often as a teacher of English as a second language is or are barcodes and these are QR codes and instead of printing out lots of materials and lots of worksheets, I try to go green and uh, in order to do it, I use QR code generators and then I ask my students to use uh, their phones. So as you can see here, most of them all of them do have smartphones and it's important that they use the tools that they are used to and the tools that they carry every single day. So in our classroom there are lots of different QR codes that are hanging and students simply have to stand up and they have to move around. Uh, our students spend 180 days in average in classroom. The problem is that usually they are just sitting at their desk and not only is it unhealthy, but it may also contribute to leg disorder, organ degeneration, many kind of health issues that I don't want my students to struggle with in the future. And I'm using QR codes because I want my students to be active, to be physically active. They have to stand up, they have to go around, and I'm not only using QR code technology in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. And even if it's minus 20, my students go outside and stay outside and play with their smartphones and learn at the same time. So here they are participating in a kind of a treasure hunt with the use of QR technology. Uh, here you can see students taking international English. That's an elective course that we offer in our school. And what they are using are cardboard glasses. And this is probably the simplest version that would cost five bucks or four bucks on Amazon or eBay. The only thing that they need to use is simply their phone. So they would put their smartphone here and then they would uh, put the glasses on their nose. And uh, what are they doing here? 
one of aims in international English class is to study about international work and education. That's one of the competing aims we have to cover. And it would be lovely if I could take my students to the University of Stanford or to the University of Australia. But of course, I don't have resources to do that. That is why what I do, I'm showing my students all these amazing and modern campuses using VR technology, because most of American universities and Australian universities have these amazing websites where you can find uh, VR software showing the campus. And every time I use a new technology with my students, I think it's important to ask them what they think about it, how they feel about it. And one of my students after that session told me, I'm citing, Barbara, learning is not about um, studying the content, it's all about feeling the content. And very simple tools can, uh, can be used to do that. So if you want to engage your students, if you want to motivate them in a different way, think about all these devices that are out there that can be used in the process of teaching. Um, another thing that I use in my teaching is project-based learning. My journey with projects started in 2011. And uh, at that time, I created my first project. Can you raise up your hand if you have heard about eTweening? Okay, very few teachers, okay, have heard about uh, this platform. eTweening.net, by the way, if you would like to be a part of this community, what is it? And to cut that very long story short, it's a community for teachers, for school librarians, and for um, students who would like to collaborate and partner up with other European schools. So here you will find access to educators working in Europe who would like to partner up with other schools. And at that time, I thought that it was enough to connect my students with European countries only. But in 2016, I decided to go global and I couldn't find any kind of platform so I decided to create my own project and I designed a website, I sent invitations on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn to all the teachers that I've already known and I shared invitations and I uh, decided that why should I only choose European countries? There are so many other countries that we can learn from and my students were really interested in collaboration with English speaking countries. So I had to find students and teachers working in Canada, in the United States, in Jamaica and my journey with global projects has really changed my life. It has helped me grow both professionally and personally. If you have no idea how to start, please reach out to me. Uh, you may collaborate with me or I can show you where it's a good idea to find uh, your future project partners. So when you are looking at this slide, you will see some of the projects that I have designed. And the first one in 2011, had only six different partners, and these were European countries only. The one in 2016 had 35 schools from all over the world, and this year, in 2017, uh, in August, we started something really big. The project is called Be the Change, Take the Challenge, and it, um, it's a partnership between 110 schools from all over the world. So it's really getting bigger and bigger every single year. Uh, here you can see the project that I mentioned in 2016 called The Universe is Made of Tiny Stories and we have our own website. So if you'd like to check what we've been doing, what kind of tools we've been using, please visit that website. And these are some of the countries that participated in this first global project. And these are my students uh, from Nanista High School that were part of um, one of the projects that I have designed. 
In, yes, okay, so in 2017, in August, um, I collaborated with more than 100 teachers from all over the world, and there are many Italian partners, lots of Italian teachers who reach out to me and who want to collaborate with me. But we did have schools from United, United States, New Zealand, Sweden, Czech Republic, Nigeria, Nepal, so you name it, lots of different schools were working together with us. And this project is still going on. If you'd like to join us, feel free to reach out to me. There is a form you have to fill out on that website. So you'll find all the useful information on uh, this website. And why am I doing that? Because I think that it's high time that teachers focus on 21st century learning. It's already 2018. So we really have to think about collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and creativity, and project-based learning is probably the best way to do that. Uh, in, yeah, this year, we focus on the sustainable development goals. I feel very passionate about this topic, and uh, I'm sure that we are going to reactivate this project. It's not the end, because I still get questions whether we could work on the SDGs in 2019. I'm also one of the Teach SDGs ambassadors. Okay, another thing that I came up with is Genius Hour. And it's again a good example of project-based learning. And here, the main idea is to create a student-centered environment because it's, uh, it's based on that idea that every student should be able to focus on his own passion and interests. So first of all, students would have to come up or create a good research question. That's the first step. And I'm not going to limit my students in any way. If someone is interested in astronomy, go for, go for it. If you are into um, global issues, focus on that issue. So these are some of the questions that my students uh, have been working on. That's the first step. Afterwards, everyone has to find an expert or a professional using uh, social media networking sites and connect with that person. My students are on Facebook and I know that they spend lots of time doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And I think it's a good idea to show them that we can use social media networking sites in order to do something that is related tightly to learning. So I would ask my students to use LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook to connect with people that could help them answer or find the answer to these different research questions. And so far, I've never experienced that there was, some, there was someone who would say, no, I'm not going to help you because I have other things to do. So they have to write letters, they usually write emails, and they send messages to all these people that uh, would be willing to share their expertise or passion with my students. And okay, that's just one example of the use of Twitter in my uh, English class. Uh, the topics that we've been working on were related to varieties of English, and that's something that we do in international English class. And as you can see, it's me first trying to show my students how to reach out to others, how to ask for help, because they are not used to it. And um, they need help, they need to know how to do it. So I'm just um, writing that message, I'm sharing that message on Twitter, and then I'm waiting for someone who's going to reply to these different messages. And here we have Stephen Kober, who lives in Australia, and by the way, he's a teacher as well, who connected with my, with my students who wanted to analyze or work on um, Australian English on Strine, and they needed help to do that. So I think it's a good idea to encourage you students to use social media in the process of learning because I'm not an expert in all these different fields that my students may find interesting. So that is why I'm using social media networking sites to reach out to others, to ask for help, and to connect my students with people who are very engaged in their field, who maybe are professors or studying at the university and willing to share knowledge with others. 
And right now, I would like to show you one, um, one clip that was made by my student, and uh, she was working on Genius Hour project. And as you already know, my students can select topics that they find interesting. And she's going to talk about sign language. So throughout three months, she uh, was working on that topic. And she's going to show you what she has been doing. So the last stage of Genius Hour project is to post it online and share it with wider audience. It's not something that is only assessed and evaluated by teachers. Uh, the point of learning is to share it with others. Learning is a social process, so I believe that we have to share what we are doing in the classroom. It's not enough only to evaluate it on our, on our own. I want other people to find out what we are doing, why we are doing, and uh, then sometimes my students would receive feedback from people who are experts in the field. So let me show you that short clip. Hello, my name is Heba H E D D A. I am seventeen years old and I live in Norway. My hobbies are handball and guitar. I like to travel and talk to my friends. My Genius Hour project is coming to an end. However, my learning process is far from finished. It feels like I've come a long way from where I started, but I have so much left to learn. Uh, I now know the alphabet, the numbers, how to introduce myself, some basic phrases, and words related to my workplace. I completed my goal of being able to Okay, I'm sorry I have to stop now, but there are so many other interesting things that I would like to cover, and I'm looking at time, and I have only seven minutes left. But if you would like to have a look at other samples or other examples of what my students did in the past, please check YouTube. All these projects are to be found there, and I usually encourage my students to share their final product with other teachers and other students, so you'll find a long list of their work on YouTube or on Twitter. Okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> another video that I would like to show you, but I'm running out of time. One of the tools that we use when we work with videos, when we work uh, with YouTube clips, is Timelinely, and it's a great annotation tool. So it's not enough for my students to watch the content, because that's something that is done in other classrooms, that teachers show the content, ask some questions, and that's the end. I think that in order to develop critical thinking, we really need to dig deeper. And that is why every time we watch a YouTube clip, I ask my students to annotate different kinds of videos. And that's the tool that we've been using this year. There are many other tools, but I think that this one is user-friendly and it's very easy to sign up. And afterwards, when my students are annotating their videos, because here they simply need to place any kind of URL, they have to ask questions and they have to collaborate. So if they do not understand something, they would post that question and they, another student would have to reply to their question. 
And what is really great, what is really great about this store is that you can add comments, you can add other videos, you can add pictures. So that video becomes a new version of that first draft. Okay. Um, by the way, if you would like to follow me on Twitter, you can find my Twitter handle here. And uh, why am I using Twitter? Twitter is the best example of professional development tool. I've been using Twitter for the past four years and my network has really grown every year or since I started to use that tool. Um, if you would like to find out examples of, all, of everything that I do in my classroom, please visit my Twitter account. Every time I come up with a new idea, I take a picture and I post information about it on Twitter. I believe in transparency, I want to be transparent, I want to show the world what I'm doing in my classroom. And I think the more we do it, the more we will learn from each other. Okay, uh, since 2015, I've become really obsessed with connections-based learning. And I did mention already something that I'm doing in order to reach out to other experts, other professionals. So if you visit my LinkedIn account, you will see that that's something that will pop up as uh, one of the messages that I posted on LinkedIn. And it's a very simple text that encourages experts and people who work in different kind of fields to reach out to me. And this year, these are the areas or competence aims that I try to cover in teaching. So if some of you would like to connect with my students and be a part of our class, feel free to contact me. This year, my focus is on being an entrepreneur so I'm trying to find entrepreneurs that would like to talk to my students and share their knowledge with us. Then uh, we work on stock exchange, growth mindset, global issues, groundbreaking solutions for the sustainable planet, careers for the future, international work opportunities, skills that are important for 2030 workforce, and uh, life-changing keys to success. So from August till June 2018, I'm going or I'm trying to reach out to people who are experts in the field and who could connect with my students using Skype, Webroom or acquainted.com. And uh, here we have two pictures and uh, these pictures were taken in my classroom and here on this one we are talking to Stephen Kolber uh, Australian teacher talking about Strine and about his working experience um, because he was a volunteer working in Cambodia. And here we talk to CEO of uh, Kahoot working in Norway. And by doing that, I want to show my students that it's, it's a perfect idea in this world to connect with other teachers, with other experts and with other students. Uh, some of my favorite digital tools are quizzes in order to check understanding and it's a little bit different from Kahoot. I prefer quizzes because it's student paced so every single student can work at his own pace. Then we have Flipgrid and I'm going to ask you to do something using Flipgrid in a minute. Design Cup and Adobe Spark, very two similar tools that we use when we blog because my students are blogging and then it's important that they come up with different kind of photos and pictures and captions and headlines. Then instead of using Skype technology, we are using Webroom. Why? Because you have to spend a lot of time signing up if you would like to use Skype. And here, the only thing you need is your email address. So if I'm arranging Skype, it, so, if I'm arranging webroom sessions, the only thing I need is an email address belonging to my students. And right now, I would like you to join me, okay? So please visit the following link. If you have QR code scanner, then you can scan that code and you will be redirected to Flipgrid, all right? How many of you are using QR code scanners? Perfect, okay, so please scan the code. That's the easiest way of entering that link.
So when you enter this link, you will be redirected to the following website. Can you raise up your hand if you have ever used Flipgrid technology before? Okay, mm -hmm. perfect, so right now, perfect, sorry, okay, so that's the link I want you to enter or if you are using QR code scanner, please scan the code. Are you in? Perfect, okay, so right now, don't worry, it's not scary. What I want you to do, I want you to click on that green button. Okay, let me show you that button here. And I want you to record, okay, and answer to the following question. What's the greatest benefit of technology in education? Just one sentence, okay, doesn't have to be a very long sentence, a short one. What do you think is the greatest benefit of technology in education? And in a minute you will see that all these answers will pop up here on the whiteboard, okay? You can take a selfie or you can just record yourself and then both, yes, you have to use your smartphone to record yourself, okay, to answer that question. You can do it in your mother tongue if you want to, okay? Don't worry, it doesn't have to be in English. Just click on that green button and try to record yourself. Okay. <laughs> Opening up, opening up, all right? Is it working now? Yeah. Good, okay. You see that I'm running out of time. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not sure if you want to do it, but it's a great tool for recording your students' answers and it doesn't require too much work. The only thing you have to do, you have to come up with the question and then you have to share the code with your students. Once they start using their smartphones, they have to record themselves and then all the answers will appear here. So can we get one person sharing his answer with us here? No? Okay, Me perfect, thank you very much Mio, well done, okay, amazing, okay. So as you see, it doesn't require too much work, it's very simple and try to give your students a voice and a choice. I think that Flipgrid is an amazing tool and I use it very often in order to give my students a voice. And here you can change uh, the settings, so you can share it with very, very wide audience. You can share it with your students, or if you have very shy students, you can decide if you want to share this video, uh, this video with other students, or just you know to to get one-to-one -one contact with your student. So I hope that you will test it out with your students in the future. Okay, it's a great tool. It's free. And if you check uh, Twitter, you will see that people are really impressed with that tool. And it's very popular. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can do that. That it enables students to connect with students in other countries, which was impossible before using technology in the classroom. 
Thank you very much, Mio. A round of applause, okay? To a very brave teacher who wanted to share her input with us. Thank you very much, okay. Um. <laughs> okay, to sum it up, because I'm running out of time, unfortunately, I would like to say that in my classroom, students are, first of all, collaborators. They are in charge of time management. They decide how much time they want to spend on different <laughs> projects and on different tasks. They are critical thinkers, problem solvers. They are networking with other people, with students, with teachers, and with experts in the field. They are working in a team, and they are connected. And that's the most important point I would like to make we have to use technology in order to stay connected and there are so many use, so many great ways of using technology. If you would like to find out other examples, please follow me on Twitter. And here, uh, okay, is my Twitter handle and my main website. So let's stay connected. Thank you very much for listening to me today.